No, I invented the marble donut. Wait a minute, you invented the donut I picked? Yeah, I did. When I used to work here, I would I'd bring the donuts out of the tray, I'd put it in there, and I would stand with a cup of coffee and just watch. And you see somebody come and say, wow, this is really good, is this a new donut? My day is done. Now that's a little risque for you, the sort of cereal. Yeah, that's, that's, that's What's for, that about? That's for millenniums. If I think about somebody who owns a donut shop, I don't think of them dressed like this. <laughs> if I had to guess everyone's profession on the subway, I don't think yours would match. Say donut maker. No, definitely not. Back in the early 60s, I go into business with my brother. This is like 1961-ish. And the philosophy I always had was I want to be my customer, not today and tomorrow. 10 years from now, I want them thinking about coming to my place. I would come out after baking in the morning, and I'd come out and have a cup of coffee. Lots of people would come in around the same time every morning. So now you had these friendships that developed. You had this proliferation of donut shops around the city. So a lot of people keep coming back, and I think it's the quality of the product, and I think it's the service. It's a friendly place to sit and have a cup of coffee and a donut. People who come here, they like the, the old-fashioned stuff that's still around. Yeah. People gravitate to yesterday. You know, in a world like we live in today, there's so much turmoil and so much going on. I feel like in America, we're always talking about tomorrow. You know, we all talk about tomorrow. But, it, but we're eating a donut day. of yesterday. You do have a lot of competition. Yes. So we had two Dunkin' Donuts here, one three doors down on 14th. They went out and then one around the corner, two or three doors around as well. So you've had competition open up around you and you're still standing and they're not. I like the way you're being humble and modest about the truth, which is why I'm stating it, so that all you have to do is nod like you're in court. Yes, Your Honor, that's the truth. Yes, Your Honor. So we flower the hands. Yes. Mix. Mix. This feels like a silk comforter. How many donuts have you rolled? How many donuts in your life? Ooh, a lot of donuts. Now you can cut it. This is, what if I screw it up? Oh, man. Let me show you. I'm gonna get fired, go ahead. Love coconut. Oh, I could never work here. Oh my God, no. I'd be wearing elastic waist sweatpants within a week. Wow. It has the crust on the outside. The crusty, the icy. It's the crusty that makes this, honestly. You're eating the middle. That's what I do. I told you. That's not the right ratio. Now you don't have enough filling left for all the donuts. I don't eat the rest of the donut. I sit down with five or six donuts, I eat the centers, I go on to the next one. New York City, donuts, that's honestly a tough crowd. Now I know you know what you're doing and your passion shines through, but you ever feel vulnerable putting a donut out there? It's gotta be a donut I'm romantically involved with. You, you have a love affair with each and every one of these donuts. I'll tell you. My style. Okay. Wait, like, can I guess? Can I guess? Sure. Used to be my favorite. Not anymore. And I'll tell you how that came about. Well, how does a donut fall out of favor? You've been in relationships. <laughs> they come and go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they do. It happens. People that actually have a passion for what they do, it's never a job. I was fortunate enough, both in donuts and when I work on Wall Street, Sunday nights, I can't wait for Monday morning to come. It's never a job. It's something you love doing. I'll take the chocolate, you take the vanilla bite. So. One, two, three.